Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 40. It's on interaction forces, which are forces between different objects. And this whole video revolves around this one statement. A force on an object always requires another object. So let's look at some scenarios and make sure this holds true. Let's say a box is being pushed across the floor. Um, there's clearly a force being applied to the box. What's the other object? It's the person pushing the box. Or if we look at the moon as it orbits, um, clearly a force is being applied to the moon. What's the other object? Well, that's just the Earth. Or if we look at this charged particle as it accelerates up and to the right, there's clearly an electric field, but there must be another object. There has to be a positive charge down and to the left, or maybe a negative charge up and to the right. So those are pretty easy. Let's make it a little more difficult. If we see a rocket accelerating through space, there must be a, another object, but we don't see one. What is it? It's actually the rocket fuel. And so as the rocket applies a force on the fuel in one direction, the fuel applies an opposite and equal force in the other direction, causing it to accelerate. Or if we look at an arrow in mid-flight, and this is one that's puzzled scientists forever, as it's right in the middle of its flight, what's the other object? Well, there is no other object. In other words, this just has constant motion, um, and so there's no force being applied to it at this point. It just has what we would call inertia. So if you ever have an object that's having a force applied to it, that means that there's another object. And just because an object is at rest doesn't mean that there aren't any other forces acting on it. They might just all be balanced. So we could have balanced net forces acting on that object. But if they're unbalanced, those net forces are in one direction, we know this, that there's going to be an object accelerating in that direction. The net force on an object and the acceleration will always be in the same exact direction. Now the velocity is different. You could have an object that's moving with a velocity to the left and it's accelerating to the right. And we'll look at that scenario in just a second. Now this idea of motion has been confusing to scientists for a long time. Even Aristotle thought if you push an object across the floor, then we have to have a constant force being applied onto that object to keep it moving at a constant rate. But what he didn't see is friction. And he didn't understand why an arrow keeps moving through space if there's nothing pushing it. It simply has inertia. And the scientist that really figured this out was Galileo. So he took a sphere and he would roll it down like that. Its potential energy becomes kinetic energy and back to potential energy. And it almost goes as high as it was before. So what he said is, let's imagine we change the shape. What's going to happen now? it still almost makes it back to where it was. And now let's make it look like this. What's going to happen? Well, it's just going to keep rolling. If we eliminate that friction, it's just going to keep moving. So he discovered this idea of inertia. And so what's an interaction force, remember? It's a force between one object and another object. And if we have an astronaut like this who's out in space and his gear breaks down, so he can't maneuver at all, he's really stuck. He can't apply a force to himself to move anywhere, and so there's no way that he can accelerate. You can't apply a force to yourself. And a really cool experiment to do this uh, in a physics class is a setup like this, where we have a cart, and on it we have a sail, and then we have a fan that's blowing wind into the sail. And so this is one object, and so you can't apply a force to yourself, and so this actually won't move. If we want to get it to move, we have to remove one of those objects. If we remove move the sail, the wind's going to push against the sail and the cart's going to move to the right. Or if we leave the sail attached and move the fan to the right, the whole thing is going to move to the left. We have to have that external object. Now remember, if we have an object at rest, it doesn't mean that forces aren't being applied to it. It's simply not accelerating. And so what forces are being applied to this object right here? There's clearly gravity down, um, but it's not accelerating down. So there must be an opposite and equal force. We call that the normal force that's being exerted by the table itself. And so there's no net force, there's no net acceleration. Let's take that same object and slide it across ice with constant velocity. Let me pause the video here for a second. So what are the forces acting on that object now? We still have gravity down. We still have a normal force going up. But there's no net force in either direction. It simply has motion already and it's going to continue with that motion. Now let's save that astronaut who's out there kind of um, stuck in space. If we apply a net force to it, then we can get acceleration. And so the way this works with these suits is that you will shoot nitrogen gas out one side. And as you do that, 
you're applying a net force. In other words, you're applying a force to that gas and it applies an opposite and equal force back on you. And so our net force is going to be to the right. So what's that astronaut going to do? It's going to accelerate to the right. That's Newton's second law. Um, now let's take that same astronaut and say that it's just drifting from the right to the left. And again, let me pause the video right here. What happens if we turn on those same jets? Well, we know now that the net force is going to be to the right, so the acceleration is to the right. But watch what happens when I turn on those jets and then I start the video again. You can see it's now moving to the left, velocity to the left, but the acceleration is going to be to the right. Remember, net force and acceleration are always in the same direction. So did you learn to analyze scenarios and make claims about the forces being exerted on different objects and what those other objects are. Remember, if it's just at rest or moving with constant velocity, there's no net force. Did you also learn to challenge this claim that you can exert forces on yourself? And finally, this is an AP Physics 2 concept. Did you learn that if we want to apply a force to a charge or something that has gravity, we have to use something else that has that same kind of a charge? The Earth has mass, it has gravity as well. And so that's interaction forces. Again, forces between objects. There always have to be two objects, and I hope that was helpful.